What's happening? I'm Brian Tong and welcome to the Apple Buy. This week it's all about the iPhone 3.0 preview and we know you've read all about it but we're here to show it to you in action so I'm going to turn things over to our special correspondent. Now first up there's copy and paste and it's used in a few ways across all the key applications. I'm in the email app and you just have to double tap on a piece of text. You'll see two handles that you can drag to adjust your selection and then you have the option to cut, copy or paste it. Now if you want a chunk of text, I'm here at Wikipedia's website and I'll just hold down. It will select that area of text so I can copy it all. Now the copy and paste features work across applications so I can then paste that Wikipedia info in a text message and send it away. Now another addition is that you can copy and paste multiple pictures from your photo gallery and then send them away. This was a huge request that everyone wanted so I'm glad they put that in. Now multimedia messaging is pretty much standard on every phone and the 3.0 software finally supports that. So you can take a picture, a contact, a voice recording or even your location and send it via MMS. Apple's search tool called Spotlight is here and it lives on the iPhone as its own page to the left of your home screen. It searches across the application so type in something and you'll get results from your contacts, emails, calendars and songs and then you just select the one you want and it will take you directly there. Now search is also integrated into the individual apps. At the top of mail you can search by sender, receiver, the subject or the entire message and you'll find it in your calendar, notes and the iPod. Another feature is landscape mode and it's available in all the key apps so you can use your iPhone or iPod touch horizontally to text message, send email or write notes. You can also set what app your phone goes to when you double click the home button and when you send a text message you can start typing another one as the first one is sending. You couldn't do this before and it was pretty annoying. Now if you hold down on a link in Safari you have the option to open that link in a new page or copy it and the number one feature you guys have been wanting you can shake your phone to shuffle songs. I know, that's really what I love. Overall, there's a ton of major improvements and other bells and whistles in the 3.0 software. So you guys, check it out and back to you, Brian. All right, thank you very much, Brian. Now, that rookie missed this one, but there's another cool feature. It's the option to find my iPhone. So if you go into your mail settings under your account, you'll find it right here. And we're suspecting it allows you to locate your phone using me.com. So now you know it's time to get that $99 account. And guess what, people? More wallpapers. No, not really. I'm just messing with you. Okay, now there are plenty of people who were bummed that apps won't be able to run in the background, but Apple's Scott Forstall explains why. Background processes drain your battery. They don't let your phone go to sleep when it needs to. They don't let it go to the lowest power state. The standby time dropped by 80% or more. I can barely get my iPhone through the day, so for now, just for now, bring on the push notifications. Now along with push, developers will get access to tons of other features in the 3.0 software. And this is just going to open up the possibilities of the iPhone, iPod Touch and future Apple Touch devices wide open. Third party accessory apps will allow hardware to talk to the iPhone with specifically built apps and Apple showed an example of changing a speaker's equalizer settings from your phone or even monitoring glucose levels for someone with diabetes. Just incredible stuff. Now developers can also have in-app purchases if they want to offer more content like additional levels in a game and it's done directly in the app. So now, you know, we can spend more money. Now there's peer-to-peer -peer connectivity over Bluetooth for gaming and data sharing and Apple's now allowing companies to develop turn-by-turn -turn directions using their own maps. Translation people, true GPS will finally be coming and I am excited about this. Now the new update will also support A2DP Bluetooth for stereo Bluetooth headsets. Now this was just a preview and the 3.0 software will be available in summer of 2009 as a free upgrade for all iPhone 3G and first gen iPhone users. But the first gen kiddies won't have MMS or stereo Bluetooth support because of different hardware but they'll get everything else. And it's going to be $9.95 for iPod Touch users, so, you know, pony up on that money. Now, since we're talking about all things iPhone, let's check out the app of the week. This week's app is called Roxy Photo Sharing. Now, a friend of mine showed me this, and I just think it's a really slick way to instantly share, comment, and find photos wherever you guys are. So when you upload a pic, it sends your friends and your followers, and you kind of might call it the Twitter of pics, but it can also send your pictures directly to your Facebook, your Twitter account, or a blog, or find pics near you or near a specific location. So you guys give it a try, check it out, and best thing of all, it is free. 
Now there was a Q&A session after the iPhone preview event, so what about Flash? Well, it's still not happening anytime soon, and as for tethering, Apple is building in the functionality, but it's up to the carriers to offer the service and make it happen. So after all that, the Apple Byte hit the streets to get some of your reactions. Thank you, Brian. We are here in front of the Apple Store in San Francisco, so let's just see what people have to say. Is there one specific feature that the new iPhone software will have that you think you'll use the most? Cut and paste. Uh, it gets a little repetitive writing the same thing over and over, and that, that's a feature I've been looking into a lot. Are you an iPhone user yourself? I'm not. Oh. <laughs> I'm surprised that they didn't already have those features. They seem uh, really useful and they seem like a natural thing to have. I really <laughs> like the uh, the cut and paste. That's pretty rad because I felt pretty limited. You guys have uh, original iPhones and you do know that uh, one of the features of multimedia messaging won't be, you won't be able to do that. Um, how do you feel about that? It totally sucks. <laughs> Clearly a lot of the people that we talked to were happy campers. So, okay Apple Biters, it's your turn. Send us your emails to the Applebyte at CNET.com because I'd love to hear what you think about the new software preview. I'm Brian Tong, thanks for watching, and come back next time for another Bite of the Apple. Hi, I'm Molly Wood, host of The Buzz Report, the show about the tech news that everybody's talking about. See it every Friday in high def at CNET.com slash buzzreport.